Hey friends, I figured out something awesome and I wanted to share it with you. So I'm going to talk about testing your site in every browser and let's set up expectations. This isn't automated testing. So this is literally, I want to open my page and make sure it works in Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. And for a long time, this was a pain for Windows and Linux users because we can't test Safari. In the past, Apple had some builds of Safari for Windows, but they discontinued that, so after that it's really hard to test for Safari, so you probably know this situation. Uh, you have to hunt down someone with a Mac, etc., so you can make sure your site looks great. Or you can even use a virtual machine on Windows, but that legality is maybe gray, you maybe don't have the resources or hardware, right? So yeah, so let's get into it. So let's first talk about what are the major browsers even, like what are we even testing for these browsers, right? So if you look at the browser market share, let me just open it here. So we can see here that Chrome is at 64% market share, Safari is almost 20% and Firefox is almost at 3%. But you might have noticed me, why are we mentioning Edge? Edge is like higher user bases than Firefox. And this is what I want to talk about briefly. So why are these the major browsers we're focusing on? So the reason is because these browsers have the highest market share, but also each of them has their own browser engine. So if we go to the Wikipedia for the browser engine, we can see a definition of it. And basically a browser engine is responsible for rendering your page, right? It takes care of the HTML, CSS, and then the JavaScript engine is a separate thing. For example, Chrome uses V8 that Node.js literally ripped out of the browser and that's how <laughs> it became Node.js, right? So that's a really interesting tidbit. So yeah, so basically those are the only three browsers that exist because most browsers such as Brave, which I use primarily, and Microsoft Edge among other browsers are just Chromium based, which is the base of Google Chrome. So in that regard, they're the same. And those are the only browsers you have to test for, right? And if you want to learn more about what engines they use, let me just close this. So Chrome uses Blink, that was developed part of the Chromium project. And originally it's a fork of WebKit and that's what Chromium used. And WebKit is also what is used by Safari and developed by Apple. But Firefox uses its own web browser rendering engine Gecko, which was developed by Mozilla. So this explains why we test for these browsers, but the problem is that only Chrome and Firefox are available on all platforms, but Safari is Mac OS only. So you're out of luck if you're a Linux or Windows user. So what can you do? Mac users might not care about this post because they already have access to all of these browsers, but maybe you're curious so let's get into it. So first let's start off, if you're a Linux user, the easiest thing you can do is go to your software center or whatever, terminal package manager. Let me just scoot this over side. It might look weird because of my overlay setup, don't worry about it. And you can just look for Epiphany or the GNOME web browser and you can download it and that's it. It uses the same uh, WebKit rendering engine that Safari does. And if you probably notice this weird looking browser here, that's Epiphany. How cool is this? If we open the developer tools, this might look something exactly like Safari because it uses WebKit, right? And forgive me if it's small, but we're not going to focus on developer tools, right? So what about my Windows friends? I really want to help you out also. So Windows on the other hand doesn't have any WebKit based browser you can use as far as I'm aware of. So you would have to use a virtual machine to get Linux and then use Epiphany. Or you can use the latest Windows subsystem for Linux which lets you use a GUI when you're using Linux. So you can also get Epiphany on Windows. But this is like tedious and annoying setup, right? So instead of doing all that we can use Playwright. And if I go to the Playwright site, so Playwright is really used to test your frontend. This isn't about automated frontend testing. We're just going to use Playwright as the tool because it supports all these browsers. And we're going to see how this works in a bit. And how Playwright works is because Playwright ships a binary for every browser that includes Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit using their open source builds. And this is really useful to have a clean browser testing environment without extensions that can cause interference. And if you're someone that isn't familiar with JavaScript and stumbled upon this video, you're going to need Node.js because it comes with the NPN package manager that you're going to use across this video. So if we go here, I also want to mention another warning. So as I said, if you're on Linux, the easiest thing you can do is just use Epiphany, right? Because there's an issue with WebKit because Playwright only supports Ubuntu 20.04 LTS at the time of writing this. So you would have to use Boxes, that's another virtual machine manager, because it's unsupported on other Linux distributions. So for you Windows users, etc., here's how to set up Playwright. So this is going to be simpler. This is like a couple of steps maybe. So inside on the left, I'm inside an empty project, nothing special. Just open your terminal and first we're going to initialize an empty project. So we can say npm init y and the y flag just keeps the questions. So we can just 
initialize it, and that's it. Yeah, so we have to install Playwright. You can say npm i development dependencies, and you can install Playwright test. So yeah, give it a second. And after that is done, we're going to install the default browsers, which are Chromium, Firefox, WebKit, right? Yeah, so we can say npx, so you don't have to install Playwright globally. We can say Playwright install. This is going to run a process for you if you already haven't done it. But as you see, I'm using an Arch-based system, so it says your OS is not officially supported by Playwright. So you can also do, if you're on the right supported version of Ubuntu, let me just see, you can say Playwright install depths. And the problem with this is that it only supports Ubuntu, so it's going to use the Ubuntu's package manager, apt-get, right? And that doesn't work here. So you have to go into hunt down these dependencies yourself, etc. And let me know if you figured it out, but we're going to talk about this in later. Let's help our Windows friends, right? And then if we go here, inside package.json, inside the Playwright CLI page, we can see here some useful things we can do. So we can specify headed. So the browser usually runs headless, meaning you don't see the graphical user interface. But in our case, we really want to see the browser. We want to pause the execution so we can look around the page and inspect it. So we can combine headed with specifying the browser in our script. So this is how it's going to look like. So on the left, let's go to the package.json. Let me just hide the sidebar so things are easier to read. And you can just copy this entire section. None of this here isn't important. As you can see, here is just npx playwright test, which is used to run the test, and then it's going to use headed and specify the browser. So here I have Chrome, here I have Firefox, and for test Safari, I have WebKit, right? So the last thing we have to do is add a test, and we need the test so we can run playwright. Yeah, so let me just close that. And here we're going to create, this really isn't even important, you can just create any folder thing, you can say tests, and we can create browser test ts because it's using TypeScript, but it's not important. And then let me just go over here. So, okay, you can point this to whatever project you have. Let's say you're working on something and you start that development server, or maybe you start the build, and you can point it to that. Or if you uncomment it, it's just going to open a blank page, which I'm going to do here because I really don't have any project running. And this is how we're going to keep the browser open using await page.pause. So this is going to work if we use any of our scripts. So let's see. So I can say, for example, npm run test Chrome, thanks to, let me see, I always want to credit people who help me out. Thanks to Brent, who helped me out. We tested this yesterday and it's really awesome. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Brent. Yes, yeah, so let's run it. And what's going to happen is the script is going to run and then it's going to open a new Chrome browser, right? And this might be weird because I have tiling here. So I'm just going to exit out of it. And awesome, that works. So let me just uh, move it out of tiling bit awkward, right? So here you can see this is literally Chrome browser and this is going to be the same for Firefox. Let's run the Firefox one. So you can close this inspector here. Yeah, so let's run npm run test Firefox and you're going to see the same thing. Give it a second and here it is. So how awesome it is. Let me just move it out of tiling and sorry if this looks weird, but at least you can see the window, right? And here is even the inspector, right? And I don't even have to show you more. Yeah, so let me just close this and that's it. You can do the same for WebKit and everything is going to work fine. But of course, let me show you what the problem is on Linux, right? So if I say Safari, it's going to give us an error because it can find some dependencies. So if we look here, it's missing these dependencies that I really couldn't find the alternatives for. So if you're an experienced uh, Linux user, maybe you can give me an answer, but yeah, or whatever method you decide to use, this is going to work for you. And this is going to be really, really awesome. So you can have confidence your site looks great in every browser, regardless what operating system you're using. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one.